Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jamshit. This is our third series for the beginners to learn Flutter. So last last video we learned about icon and a text widget. Two type of widget we already talked. So one is icon widget, another one is text widget. So as we mentioned earlier, every text widget accepts only only text they will not accept anything uh, that is number but if you want to accept this number as a value for the text you need to put a quotes on starting and ending so it will consider as a string or a text so the text will text widget will accept only text and next we talk, we talk about icon widget icon widget accepts only icon data it will not accept any text or anything so we selected one icon from android uh, studio provided icon so this is the icon we selected and we show that here and uh, we just change the size and color of that size of that icon and also we talk about how to transfer a uh, transfer a value from one widget to another widget or one screen to another screen this is same like uh, if you think that this is one screen it's fine you can just transfer the value from these screens to here to another screen but this you cannot use as a screen because it's just a material app and uh, it is directly uh, opening this person widget as the home of this material app so still if you want to transfer transfer the values from one widget to another widget you can use the same way that uh, create a constructor here and uh, that constructor you need to give a value for that constructor in your previous start package so whatever these things we will go in detail when we come to that part right now we just think about only the widget uh, i'm talking here so I talk about stateless widget already here the stateless widget in simply it says like uh, it's like what value you have given here that is the value will display here you cannot change that value by by dynam dynamically or by any other way so it's just a value without a state it's just stateless widget so there's another widget that is stateful widget that we will come to that part later and uh, just just ignore this built context and all we will come to that part also later so right now we are talking about this widget so as i told the sender is a widget this also is a widget if you use a send if you if you wrap any widget with the sender widget so the that widget the child widget of the sender widget will come to the into the sender of your app so that is for, for that word we use sender widget creates a widget that senders its child so it senders its child that's what the sender widget do thirdly we are going to talk, talk about a very important widget that is uh, as i mentioned last widget i mean last video that is about image how you can show an image here so now i hope you understand how to transfer the value from here to here so it will be same for everything whatever you give here it will accept in the constructor and con that we will pass that value to the widget that's what we are doing so right now i just remove this widget here i am not passing any data so i just cancel that part and here here it's a material app so you need to bring a scaffold here and now if you run you will get a blank white screen right and in that scaffold i told you you can display an app or uh, in the next part is its uh, body part so i select only body so if you don't select any app bar or bottom bar the whole screen will take as a body so in the body i want to display an image that's what i am going to do here 
so there are different kind the different kind of uh, image uh, provider in flutter so if you may if you enter image dot you can see there are four types of uh, images you can bring into your screen one is network another one is asset another one is file and another one is memory so we will go to the first three part okay first two part right now even the file you need to use some image picker or file picker something like that and it will pick a file from your device and it will save in the memory and that file will show in the app this is what it will happen so those things we will discuss later right now we will talk about only this two so first we will talk about image dot asset image dot assets means you need to bring a, an asset in your project so this is your project right so in this project you need to save one assets for that what we need to do is normally uh, if you bring an, uh, some assets from outside it's better you can uh, bring it under one folder so I will give the folder name assets I think you so how I have done new directory and I give the name for that directory assets here and inside that asset we need to bring a uh, image so I have some image in my uh, my folder okay i will show you what was those images so, yeah th this is i this i used for my previous app so right now i will okay i will take this bike as our uh, asset so i'll just drag and drop here takes time it takes time okay just bring to the asset folder and just refract so now if you open this asset folder you can see it is here and when you bring any assets here make sure everything is uh, written in a small letter the name should be small letter and you should have the extension whether it's png or jpg whatever so this is our file so, right so you got the file here and now what you need to do is you need to give the path here to display that image here so for example let's see the path what is the path you can see the path path is assets and bikes.png right so i will give the path here assets assets bike.png so this is the path we have given so this is the path for this bike here anyway let's run but i'm sure uh the picture will not display here that we for that we need to do something in the pubset camera you can see if you go down you can see there is a section for images here assets for the images correct so we will come to that first let's run and see what's happening so i run with the shortcut i did a hot reload and it will come with an error what is that error the error it says enable to load asset because it cannot find this asset this path there so what we need to do is you need to go to upsets and uh, use this one assets and open okay this one no need or if you have a multiple images you need to do like this one by one one by one one by one but the easiest way for example if you have hundreds of images it's difficult to bring all those hundred in i mean in this subset by typing one by one one by one so what you need to do is the easiest way is just give the path here assets images and just remove the image name so this is will uh, refers to this one sorry no not folder as an images so we have only assets there 
so this is assets assets and it's open in this way we can bring that also here i mean we can bring the images there let's run now yeah still it came with the error so let's just restart still it won't come i think because uh, we need to adjust this gap here let's see how it comes yeah it's it detected no not yet right still it says enable to load so what you need to do is what i was what i normally do is here you can just put a one two line and this one also one two three line now if you run it should come hopefully and there is a spelling mistake here it is bikes here is bike so we need to change that again and run again let's finish this first uh, for restart then after that i'll rerun okay i will rerun again so it should be assets bikes dot png bikes dot png and it should be inside this asset folder normally it do like assets and there's one more sub folder that is images and inside the images folder you will put all the images in that case you need to type here images like that okay now our app is restarted and you can see the bike here bike came on the start so as i mentioned earlier you can use a you can wrap this widget with the another widget or you can click here and you can see there is one uh, yellow bulb will this up will appear here and you can just wrap with center now if you do hot reload again the picture will come the image will come to the center yeah it's, it came right so this is what image dot asset that is any images in the assets of your app you can bring and uh, show in your app the another another image provider is image dot network so image dot network as you can see the network here you know what is image dot network right image dot network is normally any image which you can bring from any http a path like any network images or any images from the internet yeah, you can see create a widget that displays an image obtained from the network so you need to give that image path here that address here okay so i will open uh, like uh, maybe i will open google I will go to google.com and um, I will search for one image and we will take that image address and I will just put the flutter logo there is a lot of flutter logo is there so I will go to image and I will find a good logo maybe which one okay let's take this one and uh, as you can see here if you put here you can see it accepts a, a string so that is why we put in a quote on the starting and ending because it accepts as a string only so we need to copy okay we need to copy the image address copy image address if I paste that one here and open you can see this is opening so this is the address for that uh, image and we will copy that path and just put that path here as a string value 
so it will now what will happen is this image dot network will bring this path and will go and download the image from this path and it will display in your app but it will take little bit time for few seconds to do all those things like because it's coming from an internet of course so let's see how it shows yeah see it came right so this one came from the internet only we didn't download this image or we didn't save anywhere this image so that's what the use of image.asset and image.network now the image is showing full of screen full of our app sometimes the image will be very big so it will show as a very big app but we need to control the size and uh, size and space of those images in that case normally what we can do is you need to wrap this widget with the container what i have done is click here and uh, alt press alt and press enter so you will have these options otherwise click here and click on this yellow bulb and wrap with the container so this container is uh, also a widget it don't have any value right now it's a null value but you can use that to control the height and width of its child it has so many things like you can give a color around this widget like this it has so many so many uses normally we use a lot of container widget in one app so we will go to we will go about the container part later now i wrap this image dot network with a container then what we need to is if you put control if you press control space you can see height here so what you need to do is you need to give an height so the height will be like i put maybe i put like 50 and width also i put 50 and always make sure you should put a comma at the end always otherwise it will show and if i remove the comma you can see there's a red button here so you always need to put a comma now if you re re hot reload again what will happen is see it became very small right it's too small so i will put just 200 now again if you run it will come to the size of 200 yeah it came to the 200 now one more option is there like uh, okay now what i will do is i will click here right mouse button anywhere in the screen and just put reformat code with the dark format so if you do that there will be arrangements will be there so now if you put a comma again and again if you do that you can see it came in one line after the comma the it came to second line so then we will select one property if you put a control if you press control space you can see a lot of properties are there like width height color alignment so many things are there but right now we will use uh, what we will use here yeah. we will use fit only so the fit what is fit widget do is image into space allocated during the layer that means it will bring this image to the space which we allocated already so we have given a space 200 200 only so we can decide how this image need to display so what you need to do is you need to end a box fit as a type of this fit because you can see if you put a mouse there you can see box fit right box fit so what you need to do is box fit dot you will have so many other options so if i put a mm, fill okay i will do color also here color colors dot yellow maybe okay and run yeah but now what happened is the widget filled with whatever the sizes there so it is you can see the width and height is same so that's what it happened it filled the parent widget now if you select another one like a uh, contain now you can see 
yeah because it's just included in in the <coughs> content means uh, whichever fills first it will stop like uh, it now filled the width right already so it will not have any changes with height so that's what it happened with the content and uh, another one is let's see <coughs> cover so cover what will happen is it will just fill and uh, maximum possible sizes it will take and it will just crop the widget to see what is inside the container that's what happening with the cover okay let's see what it what it says about boxfit.cover you can see there is a lot of there is example also how it shows as small as possible while still covering the end of target boxes okay. you can just read that one but uh, i hope you understand and uh, another one option is fit height that is as it's mentioned it will fit the height whatever the width it don't care so if i hot reload again so now if you put box fit dot fit height it's just fill the height then the width it does it doesn't care so same like that if i select fit dot width the width will fit but the height that doesn't care like that see the fit became okay but the height is no matter like that you can uh, like that you can adjust the size of all this uh, I mean size of an image that is depends on how you need it so that's what we learn so now if you don't fit don't give any fit it will fit to container and which is which one fit first it will show like that so let's see yeah because the width fit first so it just stop there this is what yeah, this is how you can control the size of a widget so now we learn about some widget that will act that widget we can say like value widget that means that widget cannot stay without any value so text to text to widget if you don't give any value it will show an error i can also like that image also, also like that so that is called value widget now let's go to the second type of widget that is input widget that is that means let's say input widget that means if you want this widget without any error I mean, it will not show any error if you don't give any value but it has an it can accept the value from the user so let's see how it works and what are those widgets for an uh, input widget first i will sell okay i will remove this this containers as i mean the child of our center and one of the important input widget like uh, first we learn about text right so the text need a value but there is a widget that is text to fill this one see i didn't give any value here but there is no error because it accepts some input from the user if you go here you can read a lot of things about each widget it clearly mentioned how it how it work and what are the things and how it should use like that so now if i if i do code reload the text field will come here and you will understand what is text field yeah you can see here there is this is actually if you click there see the text fill you can see it's blinking there right now you can type anything so that's what text widget do the, do there you can the it will accept i mean the this widget will accept the value from the user for example if you want to do a login screen if you want to design a login screen of course you need a uh, widget text field for username and another one for password so this is the same thing doing that will do using text widget so now how you will get a value you type in the text field that's how you means 
you can just open this text field and you can see there's a lot of properties again to this and there is one on change it on change this whatever you type runs and can validate and change format on change is uh, okay just give a name to the value or oh, you can give anything here and uh, this run okay so what happening here is whatever you type there whatever you type there it will take as a value so whatever you change here that value will take here and you can just mention print value so now if you do hot reload let's see what how it works see now when i type you can see it's printing so it's it's accepting the value what you have given there correct so i hope you understand so now you understand how you can get a value from a text field that is given by a user so if you want to do a login screen so you can take the email given here and that email you can use uh, as a value and that value you can use for the login or register whatever and there is another option also there like uh, if you don't want to do this way there is one best way that is you need to put a con you need to add a controller that is text editing text editing controller and uh, you can give a name any name you can give or you can put uh, so you can just put any name here i just put email controller so because uh, you maybe you maybe you are making a login screen here so first you will put an email right and that email controller is a text editing controller so just mention like that and you got a controller now the controller name is email controller then you can just put email oh, sorry you can just select a property that is called uh, what is that yeah this one you see text editing controller controller and you can put this text editing controller there so that is email <coughs> controller now let's see what it says okay print email controller dot text so whatever it it whatever in the email controller that text will print now let's uh, reload and okay i again type so you can see it's printing right so it's the same thing and uh, there are so many things so many properties are there for this text field you have uh, on tab so when you tap here what should happen and uh, when you submit it like uh, when you press enter what should happen and text align so many things are there we will go all those things one by one later now as an example okay let's see email login screen you can see all this login screen it's so it says uh, very nicely made with uh, different different uh, which one i will select a good one um, let's let's select one for you okay this is i think make it clear to show you can see this username and this password in this login screen so there is an icon here and the username here and password here so 
let's see how we can make i won't design the everything as it is i will show you how you can play with this um, text field that we selected here first of all it's take the whole screen <coughs> to avoid that i will wrap this text widget with the padding that i will tell you what is padding is uh, that that means it will take a space around the center widget that around uh, 20 each side so let's run now and let's see how what it says yeah you can see there's a gap came right in both sides and on top and bottom also that gap will be there now this is the text field and we gave a controller and it has a very beautiful option let's decorate this uh, text field for that you can select a decoration and decoration accept the type input decoration so what you need to do is you need to put the same input decoration and you know what are the things there in the input decoration let's see you can give a border you can if you want to remove this border you can remove that's like that you can do so many things that we will go later so this is a uh, hint of text i will give a hint text and let's see um email now if you run you can see there is a hint there email so if you type that email will go whatever it you type it will access so people will when they see this one you can see they can uh, they will understand what they need to enter their right so or you can say uh, type username so type username so that is the hint you can give to the user and another one again comma you have another one that is if you want to make any changes of this text you can do here that we will go later with the text style and another one is you can put error text and, and there are so many things like fill color you can change this this color inside what it shows and uh, let's go and say okay there is a helper text you can put some helper okay i will put this uh, label text now this label text is email now you will see what is this label text so label text is you can see when you click there it will show on the top what it is email right so that's what you use label text okay if i run this app let's see how it says yeah now the <clears throat> now that label is not showing right it's not showing so once you click there the label will appear so that is the use of this label text and the error text also they are like uh, that we will come later on the use of error like instead of email you put a phone number without a proper email format it will show an error that's what uh, error text to do and also you can give uh, for example this one icon you can select any icon widget so i can start email I don't know the email like uh, yeah it is there now if you run you can see see email logo came here as you see in the picture there is a email or whatever what any logo you want to bring here you can bring there that is the use of this icon so that's now you got a email i mean email or username whatever to create a login screen now for example consider this as a password so normally for the password what you will use maybe it's a lock i don't know lock is there or not yeah lock is there 
it's just an example I put so the email will change to a log yeah it's a log but it's a password right so the I will put this label text as password and enter password so you this is a password column to enter password to login but now whatever you type sorry whatever you type there it sees right so you don't want to show the password to other people who is looking to your phone when you are entering the password in that case what you need to do is you go here and select a property that is obscure 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 text it's a boolean boolean means uh, true or false it will accept only two value one is false another one is true so by default it's false that's why we can see the text you entered here okay i made it true so when i change it to true what will happen is whatever you enter here it will come as a password so you can use like this if you use this text field as a password and then still you have a lot of properties you may use when you create an app like as i mentioned before you can fill with the color or something and also there is one more important that is keyboard type for example okay i will remove this obscure text there so it will show what i'm typing there right so keyboard type keyboard type means you have to use the type text input type so what it is i will show you text input type then you can decide what kind of text you need to enter it should be a date time or email address a multi line multi line name number like if you if you select number you cannot enter uh, and let's uh, let's select number there so if you select text input number as a type should be a number then when you enter it accept right but it should not accept why it accept It's not showing the keyboard in the emulator. I think this emulator issue because yeah, now it is not. It should it should not accept any text. If you use that in your real emulator or your device, it will work. But uh, this what is this blue stuff? It's not happening. It should it should not accept any even when you click here the keyboard will open the keyboard will not show any text if you select this number it will show the keyboard will show only the number so of course you cannot use you cannot type any number right so same like that there are so many things are there like multi-line if you select a multi-line multi -line, what will happen is you can enter more than one line okay like this if you go like this it will come to next line otherwise it will show an error so like that different different options are there you can just go through one by one email address when you select email address it's multi if you select a multi line you can see in keyboard there is a button to show to the name to go the cursor to next line or here the keyboard is not appearing so i cannot show that one and uh, like a phone it will show whatever you use in a phone number those things will show in the keyboard and name will show the text email address will show that uh, at the right button in the keyboard it's, it's like that you can decide what kind of type you want to enter there so it's up to you that is another things and uh, oh okay then uh, let's go to some more options in your text field because this is very important this text field for your
first as when you make an app normally the first screen will be login or register screen right so these are the things you may use in your in your, uh, in your app right so let's see what is next input formatters there is one input formatter that is it will give any details but actually input formatters is you can decide what they can enter here how many characters should come what are the even icon can and any any symbols you can enter or not these things can decide in input formatter input formatter is a list so whatever is a list you have to put inside these two uh, of brackets so let's see how it will show one is there like white listing text input formatter actually and uh, it is now depreciated it, they have they are now using with the different and so if you put an uh, cursor they can see you need to do like this because it is deprecated deprecated and to depreciated okay i just copy that now I put there see now error is gone so it it will here you can mention what are the inputs the text field should allow must not be uh, create a format that only allows character matching pattern and uh, so it is filtering text input format okay sorry uh, there is another one i will remove this one and uh, we will put a white listing white yeah, this is the one they changed right white listing it changed to it's now changed to filtering text input format yeah okay send it so here you can decide what are the things should allow when they enter for example i can i can say like uh, yeah this one regex here you can mention this is an example right so just understand what i'm doing um zero to nine and it should be in a code yeah i think the error should go like x zero to nine yeah error should go so now what happened is what will happen is the text field will accept only the value that is 0 to 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But uh, I don't know in this end that, uh, yeah, see it's not accepting. When I type any any any, any text, it's not accepting. It's accept only the numbers. And then also you can, if you put here like a space, it accept space also. One, two, mm -hmm. put this one. Ah, oh, sorry, I need to put this here. I just put a space there and let's see what's happening I can put 5 6 and a space and 6 7 but you can put any text there and also after space I put the text so whatever you mention here you can use here so now I can use this also this hyphen also insert that so it's accepting right so that's how you can filter the things you enter there and another one is their length 
length uh, limiting text input formatter you can mention like 6 that means it will not accept any value that is more than 6 I mean anything that should come see 6 6 happen I mean not only 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 after that you cannot enter so you can limit the minimum or limit the maximum number of character you can enter in the text field that's what it's all like for example if it is a credit card you cannot enter all those names what you can and you can decide numbers only and what is the maximum number it should allow like that so that's what the use of text field there is another field also that is text to form field and this also work work the everything as the same but it has a more different use of text to form field we will come back to that later because you need to do have a validation and so many things are there so that we will come to later so now i talk about only text to field so now you got text field right now we have learned so many things so i want to show all that in one screen whatever we learn so i will remove this text center widget now remove this widget will remove the center and from the center it will go to on the starting here see so and now i will wrap this with a column and i will tell you what is column and what is row all this letter but now you just ignore i just keep as it is so first we talk about text so text is working now understand so yeah you got a text there and uh, okay i will put this column in the center just ignore this these things uh, that we will come to that later in detail so if you just go through this you may you may get confused i bring this into the center so so we talk about text widget and the next one is we talk about uh, icon widget then how you will end the icon that is icons dot and or any icon okay we learned that also after that we learn image dot uh, okay let's then asset that is assets the path is assets bytes dot png bytes.png ah, sorry testing so we talk about text after that we talk about this uh, text field right so this is what we will learn just until now Yeah, this is what we learn, right? So next to widget, what we are going to discuss is it's a uh, let's say checkboxes. Checkboxes. What is checkboxes, and how you can use in Flutter? Let's see. So I will end. Uh, I will select the checkbox. Checkbox. So this is the widget, right? Checkbox. The checkbox should have a value. So the value you can when you put a mouse you can see it accept a value of bool that is true or that means it will accept a value only true or false that means the checkbook checkbox should open or uh, should be open or close so I will just put this true and you will see you will see what it will show when I select true or false and on change it on change it same like a text field before we did 
you will get what is on change so on change it will get a value the value will be a bool only because it will get a value of true or false then you can put if you want to know what is the value just print it so you will know what is the value for checkbooks now checkbox now okay i ran yeah you got the checkbox now it is true because of this true it is click or clicked already right so now if i remove you can see it's printed the value as false now again i click it's coming only the value as false 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 only it's not changing right so on change it value okay let's restart we will have one more we will select uh, one more property that is what is that let's see key 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 pink color or like color there is no value and there is no other property okay now if i click it can pause it's not changing right why it's not changing there is something we need to do okay anyway um, it's it's now not changing because it's taking a value of true as a default one so now you need to change this to the stateful widget and uh, when you need to mention on change the value will become true will become false so when it then it will change so that we will discuss when we come to the stateful widget so now we understand what is checkbox because now it's on change it it receives a value the value we have now because it's now true but when we click it receives a value false the false will that value should change here instead of true the this new value should come here for that we need to use a set state inside and we should use a variable to display here and we should change that state of that variable inside that but right now we have stateless widget so you cannot change the state of any 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 variables right now so the this is the use of checkbox and there is one more the same like checkbox we have one more like uh, it says radio not radio button uh, switch button so that will be let's say i forgot how it bring switch only switch yeah so now when you reload yes we have a switch button here okay so when you change it will see it's not changing here when you click it should change right so when you close also it's going back because the value is still true it should change when you change it this value should change then how it will display it will show there that is but uh, the checkbox and switch is the same thing same kind of uh, actions it will do another one we have uh, maybe next what we will do mm, there are a lot of widget it's not possible to show each and everything i'm just now showing a few example to know how you can to let you know how you can use this in your app but if you have an idea right now like this you know how to use the other widget also okay now i will introduce one more input widget that is called slider now the slider showing little bit sorry it's highlighted with a yellow right because it says 
parameter on change is required and parameter value also is required with this two only you can it will work so how you have to do is go there and select on change same like uh, before the on change will provide a value and we can print that value there so this value will be a double double means it's a one two three four second number but it's with the decimal that is 1.5 1.3 Okay, when when you change the slider, it should print this value, right? So still you have this yellow color around because value is required. You need a value also. So let's go to the value, and that value should be what is that value should be? Value also is a double. So what the, how many I can do? I can put just 500 it's a double right so point zero so it accepted now the highlight is gone now when you run what you will get oh you got an error because it says maximum minimum and maximum needed for slider that means the slider means it will slide from one to one side to another side so you should have a starting of minimum value and you should have and, and you should have a maximum value otherwise it will have an error so now then you here you can see minimum is 100 and maximum i will put 500 now if you run let's see what it says yeah it's now maximum to 500 because you have a value for 500 so i will put here like 300 1 to 300 is maximum oh sorry 3 sorry here it's 500 and value is 300 so the maximum value is 500 but the slider should move up to 300 when it open yeah but still you can uh, it's not it's moving it's easy you can see the it's not showing in the screen but it's moving and it's changing the value right so how it will show for that let's see what what is the label the label is a string uh, so we need to take a value from here that value should uh, uh, display as a label so now we don't have we cannot bring this to here because we don't use a stateful widget so I cannot display that but I will just sorry So that is how it works when my emulator is not good. Okay. So you now you go to slide also. It's sliding there, but uh, in the screen it's not sliding. It should slide. You can change all this color when you press. You can see there is a light blue shadow you can change all those things in your property like active color um, inactive color so uh, like that you can change all those things so that is slider next to which widget i will show you maybe Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? There are so many. Like there is a drop down button is there. But, uh, now I hope you got an idea of how to use all this widget or any kind of widget how you can use in your app, and you now understood how you can change its uh, behavior. 
by using the properties which is provided for you so this is the basic with all the widget but some widget you may have uh, more more functions more codings you need to do that we will do when we go with the different project or app in our this tutorial so next tutorial i will come with the layout now we just we got we understood the widget that is a value that is some widget which need a value some widget which need a user input next we will go with the widget that have layouting that is for the layouting purposes like now i, I now you can see here i use a column because i want to lay out this old widget in one by one one after another in a vertical way but what if you want to make it in horizontal way like one two three four like that so you will be using the another widget that is called row now if i run let's see how it shows it may show an error because it will not fit in this uh, width let's see yeah because you already got an error you see it got an error so you, you then we will next chap, next video we will see how you can use a row a column and a list view or every, all those things like that and slowly slowly we will start creating small small applications and that's how we will go to the biggest one and also in if you go to my other playlist you can see with uh, advanced version of flutter app like a uh, grocery multi vendor grocery app and uh, oilx clones this is just two apps i made in youtube so let's continue next time with another videos thanks for watching